all of our entertainers, see, we have the talent. They have the expertise. They attach themselves to our talent. They are the managers, the agents, and they are the accountants. And that's why our black artists loved fame and got fame, but died poor because somebody else got their money, sent their children to the finest schools, and are able to continue to rule while you pass on nothing to your children but the legacy of your fame and nothing else. But today, they've developed a new strategy. Let's make our Negroes rich. A new strategy. The old strategy was let them die broke. Or they take you, you know, when you first start singing, you're in what they call the chitlin circuit. You all know about that? And then as you get famous in the chitlin circuit, they finally put you in a supper club and you cross over and you get new management, you know. And then they take you to after parties and you meet a beautiful white girl. Did I say something wrong? And the next thing you know, you've ditched your black wife and have you a white one. And when you die, like poor Gary Coleman, there's a woman pulled the plug the first day. Don't stay, you might come back out. This nigga's worth more to me dead. Pull the plug. Mm. Poor Tiger. You know, he ain't black. You know, he's a Cablanasian. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. The greatest ball player that ever did it, golfer. And the girl that he married was a nanny, I understand. A nanny. And his man making billions. And he married a nanny. Now the poor fella, now she rich for the rest of her life with her beautiful mulatto children and now he's struggling to hit the ball right. You're crossing over now. Bless your heart. But the money goes back to them. Now, they have uh, my brother, Russell Simmons. He wrote a beautiful piece on black Jewish relations. And I'm here to tell you, no black man or woman becomes a multi-millionaire without friendship in the Jewish community. I'll prove it in a minute. Did you know, <laughs> I'll get back to, oh Lord, there's so much to give you, but I can't do it all. Did you know that nearly all prominent Negro actors and musicians have or had Jewish sponsors and managers 
Florence Mills, Ethel Waters, Paul Robeson, Duke Ellington, Cap Calloway, Adelaide Hall, Valeda Snow, Bojangles, Hattie McDaniels, Step and Fetch It, Rochester, Chilton and Thomas, and the Mills Brothers, the Ink Spots, just keep naming them. Yes, sir. See, so they have a way of attaching themselves to your gifts, but you get nothing. They get it all. Now they've decided, you know, we, we, we have to change this. New strategy. Our brother, Russell Simmons, is a multi, multi-millionaire. He's a good brother. And he has great friendship with the Jewish people. Miss Oprah a beautiful woman with a beautiful heart, a multi-billionaire. But there's a Jewish man that helped guide her career and make her who she is. P. Diddy. Jay-Z. Just name them. Even in hip-hop, Jews manage most of the black hip-hop artists and man i got something i can't do it now but they end up with nothing they come with the bling bling and a nice car and they show you that they're successful but if you could see the breakdown of the record deals they end up with nothing as I said in my lecture, the crucifixion of Michael Jackson, yes, he was asset rich and cash poor. So you, if you're going to sell your assets, then you can get liquid. If you don't want to sell your assets, then you borrow against your assets. So the Jewish person with money was always there to loan Michael money Because Michael was smart enough to buy the catalog of Elvis Presley and the Beatles is worth a billion dollars. So he had it. They were trying to get it from him. He had Neverland. They were trying to get it from him. So he, was, he, he loved nice things, so he spent money because he had it. But then when he needed to save his property, he had to borrow. Now, what is the strategy? See, I have a list of all the NBA owners. See, it's like a plantation. <laughs> you just a piece of meat. Throwing balls in hoops. They got dogs. They can do that. <laughs> and they go in the hoop. Now you the best at doing it. So you on a plantation. But you rich. A rich slave. You sharecropping again. LeBron James sharecropper. Now, I'm not down in my brother, but he's being used. And as long as he can play like he plays, they want him in Cleveland, they want him in New York, they want him in Chicago, they want him in Miami. So he's good meat, you know. Boy, in this book here, you should see the way they sold us. We have a nigga, 22 years old, strong. Skilled in carpentry. We have a nigger wench. How did she get to be sold? She owed her rent and couldn't pay it, so they put her on the block and sold her. It's all here. Look at you today. You can't see how you tore up 
You want a home, don't you? Everybody wants a home. So they made it possible for you to get one. No money down. No, all you do is pay interest. How in the hell could you accept a deal like that? In three years, the interest now goes up. You didn't see that in the fine print. Now you're in foreclosure. It's a trick. Who's behind it? Wall Street. Who are they? <laughs>